Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Come on, read it with me. It's on the screen. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Come on. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city. Come on, wait, let's, let's go back, let's go back. And they said, go to and let us build us a city and a tower. Come on. There it again, and let us make us. Amen. Come on. Come on, say it one more time. And the Lord came down. Go to. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And that were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. My God. And they were ama all amazed and marveled saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in his own tongue, wherein we were born? Amen. Amen. Pentecost made all things possible again. Pentecost made all things possible again. Amen. Pentecost. Pentecost. The feast of Pentecost was implemented as a harvest feast. Amen. It was a harvest feast. It was always 50 days after Passover. We, we know what Passover is. Passover was implemented when Jesus became the Passover lamb before they realized he was the lamb. Gosh. Yes, when they came out of Egypt, they smeared the blood of the lamb on their doorpost. Yes, we find that Pentecost, the 50th day after the feast of Passover, amen, it was seven weeks. Somebody say seven weeks. Oh, God, y'all better catch up with me. I'm already down the road. It was seven weeks. In other words, what they did at Passover was considered complete when, oh, God, Nikki, you got it. When, when, when Pentecost showed up, amen, they considered the Passover complete. Yes, yes, it was the seven Sabbaths, seven Sabbaths. After Passover. Amen. It was also a time when they offered the Lord first fruit. Somebody say first fruit. The first of their crops. The first of their grain. 
the first of everything that the harvest had produced. In other words, oh, touch your neighbor and say, he talk about the tithe. That's all he's talking about. The first always belonged to God. You, you, you can't do what you want with the first. The first, the first, the first belongs to God. That they would come and bring it and offer it unto God. Amen. Yes, we find that Jesus was raised from the dead. Are y'all listening to me? Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus was raised from the ground. Jesus was raised from the dirt. Jesus was raised from the dead, amen, as a first fruit offering on our salvation. That's why your salvation is for sure, amen, because that was a first fruit offering offered on your salvation, amen. Somebody ought to say, I'm, I'm saved and I ain't tired yet. Yes, yes, we find that he was the first fruit of our resurrection. Amen. He was the first fruit of our resurrection. We look in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. It says that we, through, through Jesus' poverty, was made rich. Now, don't get it twisted, thinking that Jesus was poor. Jesus wasn't poor. Let me, let me just settle this argument right here. How many of y'all got a treasurer? How many of y'all got a treasurer? Tell your neighbor, I don't need no treasure to count mine. I can count that. <laughs> he was made poor, meaning he gave up. He gave up the royalty of heaven. He gave up living in a place where there were streets paved with gold to come down here where there were dirt roads. Okay, let's just close this argument. Let's just close this argument. What you treasure and got around your neck and on your finger, it's on the streets up there in heaven. They walk on that. What you getting upset with people over? Yes, we were made rich. We were made rich. The greatest part of you is the spirit of God that's on the inside of you. The greatest part of you is the Holy Ghost that's living on the inside of you. I hate to bust your bubble, but your black hair going to turn gray if you don't keep putting Clara all in it. You, I hate to bust your, your eyes are going to wax dim. There's no need in worshiping the outside. It's going to get old. It's going to decrep get decrepit. Your memory is going to start fading. Oh, but I'm so glad that even when I get in my, in my what the Bible called my evil days, if I keep my mind stayed on him, he'll bring things back to my remembrance in the midst of it all. Noah, Noah was commanded to build an ark. Apostle Charlie, the thing that baffled Noah's soul, he was told to build an ark, but he was told to build an ark and he'd never seen rain before. <laughs> he was told to build an ark and I imagine he said, for what? What? What will we'll be better off if we get to the place of understanding that God knows better than us? God knows more than we know. God knows the thoughts that we have before we even perceive the thoughts. He's a building art. Building art. In Genesis chapter 9, he tells them to build an ark. Then they come out of the ark. God had a specific plan for destroying mankind. But at the same time, God had a plan for repopulating the earth. I ain't going there, but I just, just a little sidebar, just a little sidebar. Have you ever thought why did God give Noah and Adam the same command? Be fruitful. You could probably say it. What? Multiply 
and what? Replenish the earth. So God tells Noah to replenish the earth. Tells him to replenish the whole earth. When we look in Genesis chapter 9, verse 7, we see he tells him. He tells him. He gives him a specific assignment. He said the whole earth. The whole earth. He tells him to replenish the whole earth. Now we see in Genesis chapter 11, we see that God comes and, and, and now you, you, you have to be careful when you start destroying the foundational truths. Now that's, that's no need, there's no problem in building on the truth, but you cannot destroy the foundational truth. So we find that God tells Noah and his sons and everyone that was in the, in the ark, he says, replenish the whole earth. But we see here in chapter 11 and verse 1, uh, it says that now the whole earth had one language and one speech. One language and one speech. And we find that Noah and, and his sons were were the only inhabitants of the earth. And we find that they begin to populate the earth over again. They begin to repopulate the earth again after the flood. We find that, that, that in verse 2, it says it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. So we find that they decided that they were not going to cover the whole earth. They were just going to stay in the plain of Shinar. In other words, they were going to do it their way. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Know what the word said? Know what God said? Know what the, the pastor said? But you had a different mindset saying, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. I don't, I don't think we need to do that. They decided not to follow God's instructions. I don't need to look at them strange. We do the same thing. He say tired, but you say I ain't got enough. He says, rear your children in fear and admonition of the Lord, but you make them fear you. We decide to do things our way. Anytime we decide to do it our way, you can expect failure. You can expect disappointment. You can expect things not to work the way you want them to work. Anytime you decide to go against God. I can't afford the tie. You just don't know what you just said. You're really not going to be able to afford to. But we find that they, they decided to do it a different way. A different way. There's a way that seemeth right. But the end is what? Destruction. They had a leader by the name of Nimrod. Nimrod was Noah's great grandson. You know, some kind of way. Every generation thinks that the generation before them wasn't really smart. Yeah, his grandson comes along, and notice, such charismatic, such charisma was on Nimrod. Nimrod was tall. So, it's just something about tall folk. It's something about tall folk. We think tall folks are strong. Y'all sit there looking at me like you go, hey, you know you say, I want a tall. Tall man. Tall, dark, and handsome. A short one don't have a chance. We ain't smart. What you say? Okay. Y'all better hear her. <laughs> Nimrod, the 
encouraged the people to go against what God had declared. Nimrod had a mind, had a mind that, that, so Stanley, he was not going to find himself in the same position the people were in before it flooded. If it flood this time, we're going to build us a tower and be prepared for this flood. I heard an old wise tale that said America's was so elevated that a tornado would never hit America's because it was so elevated. Let me tell you something. There's no hiding places for God. When God get ready to bring his judgment on the earth, there is no hiding place at all. None at all. None at all. He told Israel one occasion, he said, I will wash your dish, I'll turn it upside down, and let it dry. There's no pl hiding place from God. Yes, we notice in verse 4, they said, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us make us a name. Let us make us a name. We can't be so consumed with making a name for restoration. Hello. We can't go feed the hungry just to make a name for restoration. <laughs> Praise team can't just sing so good just to sound good on the airwaves. It's got to be to glorify God. Everything we do has to be to glorify God. I don't care if it's washing a commode or, or sweeping the floor. It's got to be to the glory of God. I promise you, and I should have a few witnesses in here. If you don't mind letting God shine, he'll let you shine with him. Do I have a witness in here? Nimrod's plan was to subvert the mindset of the power of God. In other words, he wants to, want to compromise the power of God. He wants to change the power of God. He wants to have more power than the power of God. And it will never happen, baby. It'll never happen. You can't change the way of God. You can't change the way of God. Don't let him start sleeping with you thinking he's going to marry you. Don't let him start spending the night thinking he's going to marry you. He ain't going to marry you. You're going against the plan of God. You're going against the way of God. Oh, ain't nobody saying nothing now. You cannot change the way of God. He's not even supposed to see your nakedness until. Come on, reach down the road. Tell him you can't change the plan of God. You cannot change the ways of God. Yeah, Nimrod said, if God ever tried to flood this earth again, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. God wanted to populate the whole earth again. And if he was going to populate the whole earth again, they got to be willing to move. They got to be willing to move abroad. They got to be willing to move. And sometimes things come and they seem like they hurting. Sometimes things come. It seems like you're on the losing end. Sometimes things come. It seems like things are not going to work out for you. But I came to let you know, you just stay in there and trust God. I don't care how hard it may get. I don't care who's with you or walk away. They were supposed to walk away. You'll understand later on why they had to walk away. Oh God, you ought to take a good few minutes and give God praise for everybody that walked away for you because they were just getting out of the way so that God could make a way and be the way. I remember the day I told, I told Pastor Eugene, good nigga, I told him, I remember the day you told me you were leaving. It was one of the saddest days in my life. We were in transition. I said, but I couldn't see the day. <laughs> I couldn't see what God was doing. I told Pastor Marcus, I said, I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand when you left, why you, why you had to leave. 
but you had to leave because if you had not left, it would have altered right now. God, you got to understand that God is in control of your life. He knows the thoughts he has for you. He knows the plan he has for you. And nothing by any means can change. Now, uh, those of you who've been crying, those of you who've been sad because people left your life, I need you to take a sailor and remember that God is still in control. Yes, they had a plan. These people were creative people. They were creative. They had ingenuity. They built the tower at this particular dispensation of time. I could see, I could see doing that in a day when they got cranes that would lift 50 stories high. They were building a tower whose top would reach to heaven. And we find that, that they had a plan. They had creativity. They had togetherness. They had oneness. They had workforce. They had money to do it. But the thing is, I don't care what plan you've got if God is not in the plan. I don't care what workforce you got if God is not in the midst of it. I don't care what togetherness you got. We can be together about the wrong thing. We can be together about the wrong purpose. We can be together about doing the wrong thing. But God wasn't in it. Last three years have been years that God has been pulling creativity out of us like never before. Like never before. We figured out ways to do things. Some of y'all didn't know nothing about cooking. But when the restaurant shut down, you had to cook. You had to get creative. Had to get creative. Started pulling out some recipes, going online, looking up recipes. You had to learn to do things creatively all over. Ministry had to become creative. Giving had to become creative. Worship had to become creative. Everything in our total existence, we had to put creativity on it. God, notice now, God does things not by accident. Everything is intentional. All of the feast meant something. All of the harvest meant something. And I believe God is still doing things in accordance with the feast. Y'all better hear me today. Better wake up just a few weeks ago, just a few days ago. There was a blood moon suspended in the sky. But you know, God. The word of God talks about the blood moon. How the moon should turn into blood. But notice it's approaching the time that we're celebrating Pentecost. <laughs> Stuff going on all around us. God is revealing it unto us. Yes, we find that when we look at this they were doing such a work that God himself said, let me go down and do an inspection. I need to see this sight. I believe he said the same thing about us. People have been walking by faith. Stepped out on nothing. I got to go down and see this sight. <laughs> I got to go down and see this sight. Yes, we find verse 5 says that God himself came down to the city and the tower. In Genesis 18 and 21, in there, it, it wasn't the first time God came down. Genesis 18 and 21, it says God said, I'll go down now. In Exodus 19, 11, it said, on the third day, the Lord came down in the sight of all the people. They wanted to see God. They wanted to see God. But then when God came down, they weren't ready for God to come down. They said, no, go back. Go back. Talk to Moses. Don't talk to us. Yes. God said, the people 
are one. Lord, in verse 6, the Lord said, behold, the people are one. They have one language. And now nothing they plan to do will be impossible. I'm trying to help us get somewhere. When we are together, when we are one, when we are functioning in the plan of God, that is nothing that will be impossible unto us. There's nothing that we cannot do. There's all things become possible when we dwell in oneness. Oneness. One. God said, let us. Now notice in verse 4. They said, let us. In verse 7, God said, let us. <laughs> I want you to know every time let us say let us means nothing except God says, let us. God said, let us. Talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He says, let us go down and confuse their language. Let us go down and confuse their language. Yes, we find that God, not only did he confuse their language, but he confused it so that they called the place where they were building the tower Babel. <laughs> oh, y'all stay with me. Don't you, don't you go to sleep on me yet. You're going to miss something. Yes, yes, they call the place Babel. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, isn't that amazing? Every time before you got saved, you heard people speaking in tongues. You said, that old vain, babbling. Vain babbling. Oh, God. It don't take all of that. Everyone started, my God, to speak with other tongues. <laughs> because God said, let us confuse their language. Everybody started speaking with other tongues. Yes, everybody started speaking with other tongues so that nobody could understand nobody because there was no interpreter. Oh, God, y'all know y'all, y'all don't say it all of this. Because there was no interpreter to interpret what was being said. Oh, I'm glad somebody with me. Yeah. See, ain't nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. God comes down and he confused that language. And notice now, he doesn't have to take away the brick. He does not have to take away the mortar to stop the work. He does not have to take away the hammer. He does not have to take away all of the tools that they had to build the city. But all he had to do was make them start speaking in tongues without an interpreter. And the work stopped. And the work stopped. Tower didn't go any further. Cause there was no interpreter. God don't have to stop us by taking the praise team away. He can let the praise team stop. He can let the praise team keep singing. He can let the preacher still preach. But in the midst of it, he can still separate us. Amen. Because everybody got a different mindset and a different agenda. You know see? When you come in God's place, when you come in God's territory, it cannot be your agenda. What you want to do, what you think is good to do, it has to be God's plan. Oh, yes. Yes, we find that when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Hallelujah. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Somebody say fully come. Yes, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Amen. Yes, we find that when we look at this, yes, God had already put things in place. But we find that Jesus had been here. Jesus had been here. Oh, my God. Uh, Pastor Charlie, he had been here. He had been crucified. 
He had been gone. He had gone to the cross and he had been into the lower parts of the earth. And he had stepped out declaring that all power was in his hand. You see, what you got to understand is later on in the scriptures, it, that wasn't the end of the story. The Bible declares that Jesus labored. Jesus walked the earth about 40 days. About 40 days breaking bread and speaking life into people and cooking fish and all kind of stuff. My God, you'll catch it next week. Yes, he was there for 40 days. He being seen of men of 40 days. And then we come to the book of Acts chapter 1 and he brings all of the people and he said, I've got to leave you now. I've got to leave you now. And the Bible says that Jesus stood around and angels stood around. And they said, why stand ye here gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus that you see now, he's leaving, but he's coming back again. You see, you can't get so caught up in building your career that you forget that Jesus is coming back again. You can't get so so busy doing church that you forget that Jesus is coming back again. You can't get so caught up in loving your children that you can't forget that Jesus is coming back again. Somebody look down your row and say, we just might be on a day like this right here when we're in the church and one will be taken and one will be left. You can't get so caught up in what's going on that you forget that Jesus is coming back. Now notice here the people could do anything in their imagination. They could build a tower. They could do anything in their imagination. But notice now here we are. So limited, hoping that the vision manifests. So limited, hoping that our children progression be well. But they could do anything in their imagination. I wish I had a witness in here. I'm trying to let you know that Pentecost brought that ability back onto us that we could do anything in our imagination. I need somebody real quick to rail your head back and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. I, I can call those things that be not as though they were Jesus leaves. Angel sees him and makes an announcement that he's coming back again the same way he's leaving. Hallelujah. Yes, we find that when we look at this, it had been 40 days, but Pentecost doesn't come until the 50th day. I wish I had a witness in here. But the 40th day was when Jesus ascended. So they had 10 days to operate without Jesus. They had 10 days. Oh, I'm getting scared for them already. 10 days to operate without the Holy Ghost. I'm getting afraid already. But the sad reality is we got churches trying to do church without Jesus. We got churches trying to do church without being led by the Holy Ghost. We got churches trying to do this and do that without the power of the Holy Ghost. I need somebody who lift up their voices and say, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I, I can't even do anything without the Lord on my side. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Ten days got to operate without the Holy Ghost. You're subject to do things that you're not even supposed to be doing when the power of the Holy Ghost is not leading you. Peter, with his flip mouth shut, stands up and say, stands up and say, Judas has already committed suicide 
And that left a vacant position in the apostolic ministry. So we need to elect somebody. So we're going to take two people and cast lots and decide who should take his place. Well, Jesus didn't tell them to do that. Jesus said, go into Jerusalem. He said, wait on the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't do nothing until you wait to get an answer from God. Yes, they said, oh, we're going to get Matthias. We're going to get Matthias. Well, Apostle Charlie, I believe Jesus already had his replacement in mind. I believe Jesus already had Judas' replacement in mind. Y'all ain't talking to me. But the problem is, he didn't look churchy. Oh, Y'all ain't talking to me. He didn't look churchy. He didn't look like he belonged in the church. You better be careful by looking at the outward appearance and judging me and you don't know my inside. Reach down your row and tell your neighbor, neighbor, please know me in the spirit. Don't look at my outside, but look at on the inside of me. If you can only see what I've been through on the inside, you'll know I'm supposed to be dead. You see, his replacement, y'all ain't talking to me, his replacement was talking about the church. His replacement was persecuting the church. His replacement was stoning deacons. His replacement was making the church run. His name was what it was. As a matter of fact, he was so bad. God had to change his name. I came to let you know God has already changed your name. You're no longer who you used to be. You don't walk like you used to walk. You don't go where you used to go. Your name has been changed. Didn't tell them to have no church meeting. He didn't tell him to have no church meeting. Don't have no church meeting just because the people think it's good to have a meeting. Be led by the Holy Ghost. Be led by the Holy Ghost. Be instructed by the Holy Ghost. So he says, let us cast lots. Who do you vote for? 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 Who do you? Every time the church starts voting, messes come about. They voted to go back to Egypt because they were in the wilderness. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. Now they voted to get another apostle before time. I got to get out of here. His replacement was named Saul. Saul was killing the church. Didn't know that God had a noonday service prepared. Where the glory of God was going to shine from heaven and knock Saul off his beast. 
and make him an apostle in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Where my folks said they got saved in a few minutes. It didn't take no six years. But when you heard the voice of God, when you felt the power of God, you said, here I am, Lord. Notice. They were in the upper room. And the Bible said there came, you preached about it last week, there came a sound down from heaven. And that sound filled the whole room where they were sitting. Lord have mercy. Now notice now in Genesis chapter 11. Come here, come here, come here, come here. It started with a confused tongue. Y'all ain't talking to me. It started with a confused language. It started with a language that nobody could interpret. I wish I had a witness in here. But I'm so glad that when they were in the upper room, filled that they were on one accord and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says tongues of fire stretched upon them. And yes, and when the tongues set upon them, they started babbling. They started babbling. They started babbling. But this time, since the Holy Ghost was the origin here, they had an interpreter of those tongues. I wish I had a witness in here. I need to go here because I don't want you thinking every tongue needs an interpreter. But every tongue don't need an interpreter. I wish I had a witness in here. Every tongue don't need an interpreter. You see, what we're problem is, we got too many nosy folks in the church. Sometimes it ain't for you to know. Sometimes it's not for you to know. Sometimes it's for the individual. Excuse me real quick, but tell your neighbor that tongue you just may heard this morning, that wasn't for you. That was for me building myself up in my most holy faith because I came here for something and I'm not leaving without it. Is there anybody in here? So you say, I came here for something and I ain't gonna leave here without it. If I gotta pray in tongues, I'm not leaving here without it. If I gotta bless God with all of my heart, I'm not leaving here without it. Say yes, say yes. Say yes. Give God praise. Give God praise. If we get on one accord, I said, give God praise. If you can't clap, open your mouth. If you can't open your mouth, pat your feet. Wave your hands. Get on one accord. Let's give God praise. And I believe something will happen in here. The power of God will hit this place like never before. Let everything that had breath give God, give God, give God, give God, give God, give God praise. Yes, yes, yes. When the Holy Ghost came, all things became possible. When the Holy Ghost came, you can do all things. You can tread on serpents. You can call down powers. You can bless God. You can declare the destiny of your children. All things are possible. Grab your neighbor. By the hand and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Neighbor. It's possible if you believe. Go ahead. Grab your vision. It's possible. Go ahead. Grab your plan. It's possible. Say yes. Say yes. You're the part declaring a thing. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. 
I tried to tell y'all yesterday Sunday. But go ahead and declare it. Tell them I'm rich. I'm rich in houses. I'm rich in land. I'm rich in divine destiny. I got a legacy on my life. I'm going to live forever. My children shall be saved. My grandchildren shall declare the glory of God. My great-grandchildren. It's possible because of the Holy Ghost. Because you don't even know what to pray for. As you ought to sometimes. But the Holy Ghost will pray through you. The Holy Ghost will pray through you. Yes. Open your mouth. I got a word for you. Every newborn baby got to cry. Cry. Come on, babies. Cry. Cry unto the Lord. Cry unto the Lord. Cry unto the Lord. Cry unto the Lord. Lord. Somebody said, how can this be? We hearing us. We're hearing in our own tongue. We're hearing in our own language. It's supposed to be confusion. It's supposed to be confusion. It's supposed to be confusion. Because we all got our tongues. But when God comes in, he'll work a miracle. When God comes in, he'll work a miracle. Miracle. A miracle. I declare a miracle in your life. I know what the doctor said, but whose report shall you believe? Miracles, signs, wonders shall follow after us. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need somebody all over this room. Say yes. Yes. Do it, Lord. Yes. Release your power. Yes. Release your glory. Yes. Say yes. Come on, it's possible. It's possible. Everything is possible. Grab the hand of your neighbor. Everything is, I know what they said, but I'm telling you something different. Grab the hand of your neighbor. Grab it. Grab that hand. Grab that hand. Grab that hand. Now declare life in it. Speak 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 life in it. Come on. Come on. It's possible. Anything in your imagination. It's possible. Cry out unto the Lord in here. things became possible. All things became possible after Pentecost. All things became possible after Pentecost. After the Tower of Babel, they could do nothing. But when Pentecost...
Pentecost came, all things became possible. Peter was walking. Uh, sick people laid out in the streets. And from him walking, didn't lay hands on nobody. But the shadow, the shadow cast upon the people that were sick. And they were made whole. Pentecost made it possible. 